Bill Brocky's brother, um, which is quite special. And as Jamie said, it's, uh, it's, it's sat proudly at the workshop for a, uh, for a number of years, um, but it's uh, unfortunately uh, down with HRT at the moment. But it's, uh, uh, they did a great job last year. But yeah, 2006 uh, was one of those special uh, races where actually when I was driving down here before uh, this morning, I was listening to Triple M. And I had Mel Meninga on about, uh, you know, they brought out a book about rugby's and, and he, he actually reclaims a, a, a grand final that uh, it was one of his emotional wins that he had he ever played out of all these games. He always remembers that one match. And it's probably the same for me. It's like going to be one of those races at the end of my career of stopping. Uh, that's the one, one race that, uh, you know, I was probably the most emotional driving in and out of the car as well as being there the whole week. When we got presented with the trophy, we came back with it. And it's, it's, got, it's, it's, got, it's, got, it's got a proper lid on it. It's got a proper lid on it. Now, our team owner goes, what the hell? They've got the ashes inside there. <laughs> we, we, none of us were going, they are up. <laughs> so, in that, for the first 12 months, we came back to V8s, still with the lid on top, not knowing that it might be. So, by the time we actually got open, it was yeah. Then the beer got poured in. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, there was a sponsor that actually broke the, uh, the drought on that, didn't it? Yes, sure. Yeah, one of the uh, guys who runs their motorcycle sponsorship. He goes, I've got to drink out of that. I've got to drink out of that. Yes, there's a pitcher that can drink it. Yeah. And then, well, so you can travel into it sort of two ways. You get that much there, when you go that way, that's just like, yeah, it's like, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, one of the things when I first uh, got involved uh, driving V8s, although uh, well, I drive up another category, but getting into, into V8s at 19 uh, and then sort of uh, starting to go through obviously the career side of it, it's, uh, you know, the average age of a driver back then was uh, probably about 40 uh, when you had uh, you know, Bryce, Brock, Dick Johnson, uh, Jimmy Richards and all those guys still running around when I first got involved. Uh, and that was a bit of a treat for me because it was one of those moments where you grow up and uh, you, know, you, you look up to these people, you sit at home on the, on the couch wanting to do what they do, get an opportunity to finally uh, race against them and run for our shoulders. Dick Johnson thought I was an arrogant little shit. And, um, and so, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting. Wayne Gardner said I wouldn't win a race by Lane Championship in 96. So, uh, it's interesting to see you know, some of your peers that you, you look up to when you actually finally get to rub shoulders with them to actually meet them uh, in, in the flesh. But uh, of course, as the years have gone on and uh, times have changed, not only has uh, you know, the, the uh, transporters and all the teams, professionalism and the way that we operate and the way we do, do things like today has changed, but uh, the, the drivers themselves have changed. And I think that uh, uh, the average age of a driver now in a supercar is probably around the mid 20s. And uh, Jamie's just crossed that line, so he's on the downhill slope. You reckon he's uh, he's too old to drive now? We're actually on our way down there. Um, <laughs> hopefully, he can't hear us. But um, yeah, so the average age of drive now is about 20, 20 ish, 25, 26. So of course, uh, all the all the drivers um, in the uh, the junior categories are all obviously getting you know looking at. Uh, um, greater prospects. The other thing too, like really when I first started, I came straight out of Formula Ford, went to Formula Holden, did a year in Formula Holden and then straight into a supercar. So I didn't really have the stepping stones what they got today in the sense of the, the, the uh, development series and everything else. So yeah, the structure of the whole uh, industry is a lot better now than what it was when I started. Did you got Levi's nine? Nine. Uh, what would, if you were to put into the sport, what would you do? Tennis. <laughs> um, More money, is it? Uh, it's a my car. Um, it's, uh, yeah, Levi's, uh, he's getting to that age where he's learning about go-karts and everything else. He does actually play tennis. Uh, last night he, he uh, went to golf lessons with his girlfriend. So, um, so yeah, he's learning how to play golf, hopefully. Um, so he didn't, uh, but he can drive a car. We've taught him how to drive a car and everything else. And uh, you know, he, he enjoys, the, uh, I should say, he's got the ability to drive cars. Uh, he's learning how to do a manual at the moment, but he's got the ability to drive cars, but the thing is he has got the passion. He's got too many other things outside of his life that's going on. His mates, schooling, tennis, soccer, girlfriends, all that sort of crap. Um, so he's, uh, we're just waiting to see what angle and what direction he then starts to follow. Uh, we're not going to push him into any, any, any one thing, but just to see where he goes. Jay, you started pretty well, didn't you? You, you had a dad drove around the countryside? Yeah, I was, I was seven years old. So. Once again, growing up, didn't really have anything to fill the weekend in with. Um, we had, actually, I went pistol shooting. My dad was a pistol shooter. So I went pistol shooting when I was about six years old. And mum just said, that's too dangerous for me. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so, 
that's how much better, but anyway, we'll go with that. So, yeah, once again, go-karts all the way up to what's about 60 bucks, maybe 70 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
so to speak. I'm hoping right. to be in a team mid pack or whatever, because if we're struggling, they're going to be struggling twice as bad. But there's things that we want to push through that just take time, and uh, it's just a matter of resources and just just getting there. And unfortunately, when things are looking good, you start to get on top of things, and then I stick your car into the wall, and then that delays it for three months because we're doing fixing the car rather than making it go quicker. So that's why. Helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes my life real easy if they just tap the car in front a couple of times, the bonnets suddenly become available. It's a cell I've never actually told you to go out and tap you like that, have I? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't racing, what would you be? Uh, who knows? <laughs> I'm, I'm all easy in one basket, and thankfully I've uh, made a career out of it. But I love my wakeboard and I love my water sports, so I try and be a professional wakeboard. I'm a qualified boat mechanic, so I can still tinker with cars, whether it be in the driver's seat or probably under the bonnet. Could you actually see yourself working on cars all the time? No. I don't know tinkering, but I don't know whether you could actually do it. No, after my apprenticeship, uh, I was thankful, as Jamie said, that we managed to make another career path. But uh, it, it is interesting because, you know, again, time differences. When I did my course at TAFE, it was uh, basically about carburetors and everything else, and those things called injectors were just sort of coming in. So. Um, you know, today's cars are a lot different to what, uh, what I've, I learned on and uh, what I discovered. But it, it's, it's also, you know, it's interesting to, to work on a race car is vastly different to working on a road car. It's cleaner, everything fits. And it uh, works. Yeah, it's always relatively clean. <laughs> <laughs> One last question before I throw it to the floor. The, uh, if you had, if you had the start this year, you're going to go to the where you win the championship. If you can't do both, what would you choose? Ah, I go back. What are you going to do? I'll go to Jerry. That is the result of that last year. Oh, it, it's just one of those races where I, I enjoy the longer races, so anything that uh, has that sort of element to it, like Bathurst is about six to six and a half hours of driving with, with a teammate. It's a team event. Last year we, we, we tripped over ourselves quite a lot. You know, we talk about our mistakes. Jamie had an electrical problem, which you know ultimately hurt and caused you know you could almost say caused to, to lose the race. And uh, of course, when you have something so small, like we keep talking talk about a two dollar part, uh, which is basically a, a, a connector of Jamie's that uh, of Jamie's car that uh, come apart, which caused the problem. It wasn't anything else but that. So you go to a race like that, you put your heart and soul in it. The team does, and uh, of course, to do that long distance at the end of the day after six and a half hours, it's pretty uh, pretty satisfying. It stands on the podium. Right up. This is the uh, interesting year that we managed to get the championship because uh, that means you five, year, five years you've got four championships. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, well, you know, the, the championship for me is 18 dollars of golf. You know, it's uh, hard to not have a 10. It's hard to kick out of the water for a full 18. So that's why that's what puts uh, the championship in its perspective. But yeah, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any questions, folks? I think uh, if one of my wife I was a V8 supercar today. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, interesting uh, comment was made on us how family uh, cars is that uh, a lot of women did quite well in the past. So that's that many women in the V8 supercars. So. <laughs> <laughs> Transition. Yeah. Uh, I've raced against two females in go karts and any, any given sort of race weekend they beat me. So it, it's one of those things that uh, one of them got into sort of the Oscar and had a NASCAR, well the Oscar NASCAR thing fell apart. Had a couple of races and then uh, got out of it. Um, I think, unfortunately, found men and, and pregnancy. No. So um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things. That yeah, was, order two, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll go over um, But yeah, I don't know. But there's no reason why they're not. You know, Leanne Tanner was the, it will still is probably the, the latest and last of the, of the females that have, have really achieved good things. Yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of
no, no, we use it, but you know, the Scott, uh, who's spent a lot of time in the workshop at the moment, but also the workers. So when we do our pit stop practice and everything else, uh, it's pretty intense. That, you know, the, the pit crew have got to be able to pick up a wheel and a tyre, which is about 22 kilos in weight, rip it off, rip put another one on, rattle the gun up, and, and get us out in and out of the pits as quick as we can. So we do the best we can for fitness and, and for what our side of it is. The team now are very mindful about making sure that the team side, that, the aspect of that, is as best as that can be. And it's uh, something that our guys, you know, I know Jamie's engineer Mark Dutton has really taken on board, uh, same as uh, Dave Couchy, our data man, um, really loving that sort of the other side of, you know, sort of the business and in the fitness. Uh, and of course, we're not the fastest in pit lane. So of course, that's another um, determination for the team to, you know, I suppose with, um, this year, pretty determined, I should say, to, uh, to make sure that they are the fastest. So but they're, they're doing everything they can as well. So it's not only just us being fit, it's about the whole team now having a different perspective and a different outlook. There's 43 of us in the team. There's 21 people that uh, are the training the team, so this is pretty good. Now with 
they almost doubled in size and the hand survives to structure exactly the same. So those stretch two centimetres, which is massive, that would have been the change. But um, the load that would have taken as opposed to the trip and hand was massive. So probably the hand survives is the best thing we've, we've had in our sport for a long time. So still, still joke about the fact that uh, you're trying to the toilet because the whole kidney could all move, yes? Did with the 
super, but then if you take what we suck in, when we especially go to like Eclipsal, the Gold Coast here, anything else, and a street circuit, we can tell the difference. You get out of a race at the end when you had super, and you'd be like delirious and sort of, you know, a bit just lightheaded and tired, and now you get out of it and it's actually not too bad. So it's, it's sort of for us, it's for, even for our personal sort of well-being, it's a far better product to have. The ethanol runs cool, makes the engines no. run cool, yeah. so the engines running less stressed. So we've got uh, this bit of distance for the car um, to rebuild. Yeah. The, the big thing that goes crazy on, there's no smell. Just after seeing that, that crash with a very nice way to lights up, is that probably the, the downfall of it, the way it burns? Oh, that, that, that's still going to happen with the on later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big enough hit on the fuel cell, it just exploded it's off. Like a, it's like a bazooka hitting the bulletproof glass, you know, a certain amount of hit it's going to explode. But, yeah. yeah. But new car, the fuel tank's going to be pretty much inside the car. Sounds Dangerous, but it yeah, yeah, can <laughs> take more of a hit before it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. But the massive amount of it's just a cleaner thing. Yeah. It's going to affect our combo claim when we're about to see the other. But as PJ said, if the engine put, uh, runs cool, it also burns cleaner. Yeah. When, they, when, when you pull the engine out after rebuilds or during rebuilds, there's no toluene and soot in the, in the chambers. It's actually a lot better. The only thing that it has done is they, they run a, um, a dye in the fuel, like a green dye, and it does dye, it doesn't dilute, it actually changes the colour of the oil in the engine slightly, but uh, it doesn't dilute it. I, I, I say it dilutes, but it, it changes the colour of the oil, but other than that, it doesn't degrade it or anything else, it just changes the colour. If we're allowed to actually map and run the reds the way it should be designed for ethanol, then you walk out because we've done certain restrictions. Um, what was the uh, difference in sort of fitness how, when you stepped up from your karting to the big league to where you are now? Should be a squeeze, I can't remember. He's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the, well, yeah, you're pretty green. When you're young, believe it or not, you're pretty green. And uh, the more you do, the, the, you know, the, every year you, you actually get stronger and you, you get more used to uh, to training, so you, you automatically get better and better and better. But there's there's more it's more technology now than what there used to be. We're comparing when there wasn't much around, but now we've got resources. We you know we're working with body science at the moment. We've got different things. So um, physios at the track all the time. So it's uh, you you step up. There's, there's more money, the category bigger, and therefore the, the resources are better as well. Yeah. First uh, first year Jamie joined us. Here we used to have a cold water bath, the ice bath. Yeah. And we used to, we, that's how we used to have got a big garbage bin, no willy bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Filling up the water and it's the first day and he goes, well, jump in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't say, no, yeah. I'll jump in it. Well, that's a good example. Oh, six, I'm, I cannot be any fitter. I've worked as hard as I can. I cannot get any fitter than where I am right now, you know, but then my results end all up and we'll compare to all that now. So it's just the way it is. Well, we need to finish up the bit of Get back on the track. Guys, uh, those who haven't had a ride and you've got uh, your afternoon rides, come and see me and get some suits on. And those who go-karting, we've already started. We're out. <laughs> <laughs>